When I graduated from college, way back in 1977, I went to work for a company called Dow Corning Corporation, which is a division of Dow Chemical, and they make nothing but silicon-based chemical compounds. The research group that I joined had a tradition, and their tradition was to teach the new guy how to make a super ball out of silicone polymers, and I loved it. It was so cool. Whammo came out in 1965, 12 years before that, with the original Super Bowl. It's pretty good. It bounced pretty well. This is a handmade silicone Super Bowl. I roll these in my hand. It really bounces. If you look at these two side by side, you can tell that the handmade silicone Super Bowl is far superior to the one you can buy from Whammo. Now, the tough thing, of course, is to get the chemicals to make this Super Bowl, there's only one place you can get them. That's my former employer. And so once I left to go into teaching, my friends there sent me lots and lots of chemicals, enough to last me my entire career. So I've got enough to make another probably thousand Super Bowls. I thought you guys might find it fun to watch how that's done today. Um, so a, a silicone is basically a type of polymer. It's essentially a molecule that is a long chain of atoms. And the way the Super Bowl works is it creates chains of atoms in three dimensions, sort of like a, a, a sponge almost. And inside each of those little cages, we put a piece of clay, and it makes the Super Bowl very elastic. So let's get the chemicals, and I'll go ahead and show you how we make the Super Bowl. There are five components that we're going to be putting in our Super Bowl, four of them you have to have. The fifth one is this blue clay that I just like because it makes the Super Bowls a nice pretty blue color. We're going to mix it up in a plastic cup, so let's go ahead and put that on the balance and we will tear that. Now the first thing we need is six grams of clay. This is basically just clay. It's a kind of clay people use in swimming pools for filters. So I'm going to put six grams of that in here, approximately. That's quite a bit because this stuff is fairly light. And there we go, just about exactly six grams. Let's tear the balance again. And now we're going to add the first of our silicone polymers. This is a fairly viscous polymer. It has about 40 atoms of silicon and oxygen in a row, and so it's fairly thick and viscous. We need about 15 grams of this, so we're going to slowly pour that in here. There's about halfway. Got to be careful not to overshoot it here. There's 13. Now we're getting real close now. Yeah, that should be good enough. That's almost exactly 15 grams. Now, in order to get this polymer to stiffen up, we're going to add a second silicone polymer, and it's going to link all of those molecules together in sort of a three-dimensional cage. It's going to look like a, a, like a cage with little holes in the cage, but the pieces of clay are going to fill those holes. So we're going to add about half a gram. Let's go ahead and tear the balance again. And we want to get half a gram of this second silicone polymer. There we go. That should be good. And now we want to stir this up. Normally these two chemicals will not react with each other. So the two silicon polymers don't normally react with each other. You can see we got this sort of, it looks like some Play-Doh almost. So we'll stir our Play-Doh around here a little bit. I'll show you a close-up of this in a few minutes here. So we're going to stir that around till we get it well mixed, but it's not going to react yet. To make the two polymers react, we need to have a catalyst. So we're going to add a third chemical to this, which is a catalyst, and that will make the reaction speed up. We need to add about 
0.35 grams of this catalyst. It doesn't take much. Cat that's the nice thing about catalysts. It doesn't normally take a lot for a chemical reaction. So we're going to get a little bit of our catalyst here. There's a tenth of a gram. We need about 0.35. And we're getting close. There's 0.3. 0.35 grams. That should be good. Now, we're going to stir this. It's going to take a few minutes. So I'm going to pause the video for a couple of minutes here. We're going to stir this mush around, and it's slowly going to get thicker. Right now, it's pretty goopy. It's like very runny Play-Doh. It's slowly going to harden up, and when it gets to the right point, we're going to want to roll this into a ball like you would roll a mud ball. So let's take a break for a moment here, and we'll start the video again once we're ready to go. All right, it's been thickening up pretty nicely here. It's not quite as runny as it was before. And you'll notice I added a bit of this uh, blue clay. I like to put that in. It makes it, the Super Bowls look really pretty. That's the same kind of thing they put in a lot of detergents when they want little particles to be pretty colors. What we're waiting for now is for the Super Bowl to get to what I call the rollability point. That's the point when I can put it in my hand and actually roll it. And we're getting pretty close to that, I think. So I'm going to start scooping out all this Super Bowl goo into my hand. can make a bit of a mess here, but that's okay. Because once it hardens up, you can see it's just sort of oozing around there. So it's not quite ready to roll yet, so I've got to work it a bit. I'm going to take the spatula, and I sort of work it around. It's like make some, someone making a pizza in a pizza parlor. We're not quite to the rollability point yet. You see it's sticking to my hand, but we're getting awfully close. I'm getting another minute or so, and we'll actually be able to start rolling this thing. But until you get to that point, you just keep sort of working it around. You try to keep your hand as clean as you can so there's not a lot of goo on it. The good thing is that goo comes off very easily at the end. Once the silicone turns into basically rubber, you can just peel it off your hand. It's, it's very nice. All right, we're getting closer here. We're almost to the rollability point, but not quite. Oh yeah, getting real close now. I'm guessing within the next minute, our catalyst is slowly making that stuff thicken up. Yeah, I think we're getting real close now. The key is not to let it ooze all over your hands. We're going to try to keep working it here. So we keep it. And now we're getting very close here, just about to the point. I can try it. Oh, that was a little too soon. We weren't quite to that point yet, but awfully close. So we'll keep working that. I've been making these things now for over 40 years, so I sort of got the hang of it after all that time. I think maybe, ah, there we go. We have reached the rollability point. You can see now it's rather misshapen. As it gets harder and harder, as the polymers link together, it's going to get rounder and rounder. So let's take a break for a couple of minutes, and I'm going to keep rolling this and let it slowly harden up until it forms a nice, perfect sphere. All right, as you can see now, I've been rolling it for about two more minutes, and it's getting pretty round. I can actually even stop momentarily. But we're not to the second critical point yet. The second critical point is the point where it's hard enough that you can set it on the tabletop and it doesn't just ooze and get flat on the bottom. And we're getting close to that. We're within, I'm sure, a minute or two of that point. It's starting to hold its shape pretty well, but it's still rather sticky. So I'm going to keep rolling it to make sure it keeps that nice spherical shape. Another minute or so, and it should be hard enough. We'll be able to actually set it on the tabletop. Right now, I'm afraid it's going to flatten out a bit. So we don't want to do that too soon and ruin our Super Bowl. If you want them to bounce straight, you want to make sure they're as round as you can possibly get them. Again, it's like when you were kids, if you ever made mud balls out of mud, I remember doing that as a kid. Keep in mind, there were no video games when I was a kid, so we had to make our own fun. 
I think we are just about there. Yep. It looks like we have reached the point of no return now. Even though the ball is going to keep its shape, it still doesn't bounce very well. Just a little bit. In an hour, it will be bouncing pretty well, pretty darn good, maybe 90% of its maximum. By tomorrow, after it's uh, cured for an entire day, it will be bouncing like a rocket. So let's give it a little time to cure, and we'll come back and check it out, see how it's working. Well, the ball has been curing now for about half an hour, and it's bouncing already pretty well. If you squeeze it, it's feeling pretty rigid. We can compare that to our original one. This is the ball I made several years ago. And we can see that the old one is still, whoops, there we go, still bouncing a little bit better. If we compare it to the Whammo Super Ball, it looks like the new one is actually already beating the Whammo. So why go to the store when you can make your own? Unfortunately, of course, getting these chemicals is a bit of a challenge. This is the type of thing you have to be a chemist to do, but it's still fun to watch. Now, I mentioned earlier that cleaning up is not too much of a problem. You'll notice I've got blue goo all over my hand. All I have to do is rub my hands together, and all that rubber comes off. If I want to clean my spatula, not a problem. It just peels off as a chunk of silicone rubber. So I can peel that off the front and the back and it's ready to go again.